What exactly does the world's best RV warranty look like? Well, stick around because in today's video, I am going to describe exactly that. Now, last week I answered a common question that I've gotten repeatedly over the last year. And that question is, why don't you take your RV to the dealer and have them fix that? under warranty of course that being whatever i'm fixing or repairing and so if you uh, if you didn't catch last week's video definitely check it out because today's video is almost like a, a part two a follow-up of sorts and i'm going to be describing what the world's best rv warranty should look like and that's going to be based on some uh, some informal viewer surveys that i've conducted recently here on youtube along with of course my my humble opinions uh, but no seriously i've been rving now for about eight years and this is my my fifth rv here my jaco pinnacle and i'll just say while i'm while i'm talking about this that you can see that i do own a, a jaco pinnacle but this video today is in no way aimed at just jaco so i want to be really clear on that it's not even an attempt to to pick on them because you're going to see it a lot in the background of today's video because that's what i own right now but i just want to be clear that today's video is for all rv brands new and old doesn't matter okay and uh and i'll just also say that i don't claim to know everything there is to know about rving but i i think i've got a, a pretty good idea about RVers like myself, uh, you know, what we're looking for in a, in a manufacturer warranty. And so the, the whole point of today's video is really to help RV manufacturers. You know, I'm not gonna be picking on them so much, but more really to help them out, to give some insight into what, uh, what we as RV owners would like to see firsthand. Now, obviously in a way I'm serving as a spokesperson of sorts in today's videos. And I just wanna be clear, I don't claim to represent the voice of all RVers or even my, my own subscribers here on YouTube. And so on that note, I've got a huge favor to ask of you. I need your help. Yes, that's right, I need your help. I mean, we all have opinions, right? And we all like to share them. And so as I present the information in this video, do me a favor and add some comments below. For example, do you agree with what I'm saying or do you disagree? Would you, you know, take it a step further or am I flat out wrong? So, uh, you know, I really want this video to be as helpful as possible for the RV community and RV manufacturers. And so definitely drop some comments below as you're watching. All right, so today's video is going to be split up into two sections or two parts. The, the first is I'm going to build the case for why RV manufacturers should even, you know, bother taking an honest look at their warranties and seeking to improve them in the first place. Uh, you know, I mean, imagine a lot of RV brands might react to this video thinking, why would we want to invest more money into improving our warranty? I mean, our, our post-sale experience, right? When the customer has already bought our unit, we've already gotten the sale. I mean, how is throwing more money after the sale, how is that going to help us sell more units and ultimately make more money, right? Because, you know, after all, if, uh, if an RV manufacturer is serving their customer with a higher level of service, they're, you know, taking more ownership of issues and fixing more problems on their units after the sale, again, that probably is going to equate to spending more money. And again, the unit's already been sold to the customer. So why would an RV brand want to spend more money improving that post-sale uh, service in the first place. And so to answer that question, let me go straight into the previous survey data that I collected here on YouTube from my viewers uh, a couple months back or a few weeks back rather. And uh, this data that I'm about to show you, <laughs> let me just clarify, it's very much uh, informally collected. So it is by no means statistically significant or anything like that. But the, the results, the end results, they fell in line with where I kind of expected them to. And I think if the, even if I increased the audience size, you know, if it was significantly larger, several thousand respondents, uh, people in the RV community, I think that the results would still end up being roughly the, the same there. So uh, with that, let me introduce the, the first survey question and I'll throw it up there. It's just a completion question essentially. And you can see there, it says, 
Complete the sentence with the phrase below that you agree with most. Getting parts or repairs on my RV through the factory warranty is, and then you complete the sentence. So there's three selections that you can choose from and you can see the first selection, there were only 4% of respondents indicating that getting parts or repairs on my RV through the factory warranty is almost always seamless and enjoyable with no hassle generally. So that's very positive, very positive response, but only 4% agreed with that statement. Then we've got the, the second choice. This one has 19% of respondents agreeing that getting parts or repairs on my RV through the factory warranty is usually successful mostly, but still, it is an inconvenience overall. Again, 19%, and, and that, that's mostly positive too. I mean, at the end of the day, they're basically saying, hey, the warranty works, it's just an inconvenience, perhaps the, the time and effort required. But then notice the last choice with the, with the overwhelming majority, 78% agreeing that getting parts or repairs on my RV through the factory warranty is almost always a joke and more problematic in the end. That's 78%. And I think that's really, really tragic. I mean, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video. Basically, four out of five RVers would agree that RV warranties are basically a joke and more trouble than they're worth. And yet about, just about every RV brand touts their RV warranty and you know they advertise how great it is up front. I mean, it's rare to see a, a new RV for sale in a lot that doesn't have some kind of decal or stickers, right, on the outside that are boasting about the, the warranty. And, and yet in the end, once RVers have a chance to actually, you know, experience what that warranty is like firsthand, four out of five are basically agreeing that that warranty is a joke essentially you know it's a, it's like a marketing gimmick basically and i mean let's just be real nobody likes bait and switch gimmicks but that's essentially what rv manufacturers are doing when it comes to the the warranties and i'll just mention this again that you're going to see my jacob pinnacle in the background of this video a lot but this video is not picking on them this video is for all RV manufacturers, but I mean, basically with the warranties, they're advertising one thing up front, right, before the sale, but then they're doing something entirely different uh, when it comes time to deliver on the, the warranty, at least from the customer's perspective. And so that's a big problem, but hopefully that question, that first survey question will get the attention of RV manufacturers, especially the leadership that you know manages that whole customer experience because this is a real problem in the, the RV community. But uh, let's move on to the second survey question. And this one is a, a simple agree or disagree. So there's only two choices. So do you agree or disagree with the following statement? And that statement is, I would be willing to pay 5% more for an RV that offers a seamless and direct factory warranty experience with minimal hassles and no turnarounds. So let's unpack that for a minute before we go over the results. I mean, you can see the results there, but what does paying 5% more actually look like, right? Well, if you have a modest, let's say $50,000 travel trailer, then 5% more equates to paying $2,500 more, $2,500 more. Or let's say you have a maybe a, a $100,000 fifth wheel, that equates to paying $5,000 more. And then, you know, if it was a $200,000 class A, that'd be $10,000 more. So you get the idea. So what does that extra spin get you though? Well, you get to deal directly with a, a single source, the manufacturer that actually built your RV, that actually knows it best, right? And then hassles are kept to a minimum while you're guaranteed you're never gonna be given the runaround. And that sounds pretty nice, right? And I'll elaborate that you know, more in, in part two later in the video, but I mean, basically RV manufacturers, you need to pay attention here because your customers are saying that they are willing to pay 5% more. That's potentially 5% more to your bottom line as an RV manufacturer if, and this is the big if, if you agree to offer them a seamless and direct experience with the RV manufacturer and keep hassles 
to a minimum while not giving you know the runaround and such now for some rv manufacturers it may be easier to transition to this kind of model compared to others right because uh you know right now it's almost like most rv brands they kind of outsource the the rv the uh, the warranty and support almost entirely to a, a network of dealers right and including what that that actual experience looks like and, and that leads to why that warranty experience can be so wildly different from one customer to another because every dealer is doing it their own way. And so for a, uh, for a manufacturer to step up and you know, be that primary point of contact, which you know, if they built the unit and they designed it, then surely they are competent enough to provide the support for it. And uh, if a physical repair is needed, you know, where a tech needs to look at it in person, then I think that's where the RV brand can arrange, you know, all that with the dealer behind the scenes. Again, keeping it all seamless for the, the customer. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think the customer, the RV customer, we just want the problem fixed. We don't want to be given the, the runaround. We don't want to be denied warranty service for an issue when that same RV brand before the point of purchase was advertised as having a warranty that covers those types of problems, right? And so I, I think RV manufacturers, they should take note of what customers are asking for here in this, this survey question. And you know, really with all the advances in technology, the ability to uh, easily send pictures and video through email, social media, you know, texting, uh, even an online forum perhaps, I, I just don't think there's an excuse for not being able to solve more problems directly with a customer, especially compared to all the, the inefficiencies involved with bringing an RV physically to a dealer. Uh, you know, I mean, I certainly think there are some problems that are going to have to be diagnosed and resolved in person with a tech. But I would speculate that perhaps the vast majority of issues and problems could be potentially resolved directly with the RV manufacturer in a more seamless, experience all right well let's hit the third survey question and it's another agree or disagree response and that is do you agree or disagree with the following statement i would rather own an rv from a brand that has a reputation of offering a no hassle and no gimmick warranty experience compared to owning an rv from a brand at the same price that has more included luxuries and amenities. And you can see 90% agreed with, with that statement. So in essence, we could say that nine out of 10 RVers, if you're comparing two RVs side by side, you know, same price, they would rather own one that has fewer luxuries and amenities in exchange for a brand that has a reputation for a no hassle and no gimmick warranty. I mean, basically folks are saying that the the warranty experience, the after sales experience is more important than having extra amenities and features. So to put it, uh, you know, just plain and simple for the manufacturer, this one goes back to the cost of, of manufacturing an, an RV. I mean, basically customers would rather a manufacturer spend more money on building a reputable warranty and uh, that whole post post uh, sale experience compared to that same manufacturer spending more money putting extra amenities and luxuries into the the finished uh, the final product there and not to say that you can't have both necessarily i mean you know a great post sale experience and some some of those uh, amenities and luxuries but when push comes to shove rvers would rather opt for the the uh, the reputable warranty in lieu of of extra features and so from a, a competitive standpoint, RVers are saying loud and clear to RV manufacturers, we want you to spend more time on developing that post-sale experience compared to merely you know, throwing more money at amenities and luxuries and, uh, in your products. And, and I think that's pretty interesting. But let's hit the fourth and last survey question, another agree or disagree. And this one really sums things up. It says, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? If I consistently have bad experiences with an RV brand when trying to get you know parts and warranty service, I will likely not repurchase from the same RV brand in the future. And get this, 95% 
of respondents agreed. And I think this, this question probably got the most votes, you know, the most uh, participation out of all of them. And so to put it another way, in a group of 20 RVers, 19 out of that 20 will likely not repurchase an RV from a brand that consistently has poor experiences on that post-sale side when trying to get you know service uh, through the warranty. And, and to me, that is speaking loud and clear to RV brands. RVers are not in it for the, the short haul. I mean, they, they typically buy one RV, right? And then within a few years, maybe they're trying to, to get a, a different RV, another RV. And if RV brands want to participate in that repeat business and uh, you know recapture the customer again, then they're going to have to treat the customer right on that post-sale experience. Uh, to put it bluntly, what RV brand, especially the ones that are owned in, you know, by uh, publicly traded companies like Thor and, and Winnebago, not to pick on them, but what RV brand would tell their shareholders, we're going to focus just on manufacturing and selling our units to, to first time buyers because there's no money to be made on the back end after units sold, right? So we're just gonna divert all our resources on that front end to lure those customers in, entice them, right? And that's gonna ensure our long-term success and profitability and, and that is ludicrous i mean what rv brand would say that to their shareholders but that's essentially you know what these rv brands are doing by pulling a bait and switch there's essentially they're luring those customers in with these nice and you know feature packed luxurious rvs with marketing gimmicks and promises to stand behind the product yet after the purchase that same customer they're treated poorly, they're given the runaround. And you know, our RVers are speaking loud and clear and they're saying, we will not be back to buy another RV from you again in the future if you, the RV brand, are gonna treat us poorly after the sale. You know, uh, whether it's a small warranty issue or a, a big one, some of the things I discussed in last week's video, if that experience is poorly handled, they're saying, we will not forget we will be looking at another brand for our next RV. And so I think this survey data, you know, really speaks to the, the importance of repeat business and customer loyalty. You know, those are, those are common sense principles in a way for any business. And I don't think anyone worth their salt would ever suggest that it's prudent for uh, you know, long-term success to give their customer the runaround, right? On, uh, on warranty issues and you know, deliver a poor experience, especially on, on high ticket items like cars and, uh, and RVs here. So why is it then that RV brands seem to, to struggle on this one? And you know, I've often wondered about this myself and the only thing that I can figure is that perhaps the the leadership in rv companies and i'm just speculating here but perhaps the leadership in rv companies especially the ones that are involved in uh, you know managing the customer service the post-sale experience is it possible that the majority of those people have never owned the very product that they're they're managing you know perhaps they've never owned or used an rv period and so you've got these these managers these vice presidents they're serving in, in customer service, you know, customer loyalty roles, right? Within these big RV brands, but yet they've never actually used the product firsthand. They, they've never actually uh, gone out camping in one of these. And, and so they've never been through the experience of trying to get warranty service for an RV, right? Uh, they, they're just kind of aloof and not really in touch with the, with the end customer because uh, I seriously doubt that any of them would be, you know, scheming or trying to deliver a, a bait and switch or a poor experience for the end user. I don't think that's the case. Nobody's intentionally doing that. But that is the impression that the customer gets, that we get on the back end, right? Because maybe they're just out of touch. Well, anyway, I realize that is purely speculation. It's just my own opinions in the end, but I do wonder if that could be part of the problem. But uh, anyway, let me close out the video by summarizing what does the world's best RV warranty look like? These are gonna be real quick staccato fashion. So RV brands and leadership, listen up. This is the part to pay attention to. And to all my fellow viewers, my fellow RVers, do me a favor and again, comment below. Do you agree or disagree? So first up, what does the world's best RV warranty look like? And you know, if there was one word to summarize it, I think that word would be respect. 
you know, respect the customer. I mean, if an RV brand, if they respect their customer, they are going to deliver a, a, a seamless, a, a one-stop experience where, you know, the customer isn't calling and emailing different parties. But instead, if, if the RV brand respects the customer, the customer makes a single point of contact directly to the RV brand, ideally. I mean, after all, they are the ones that made the product and they, they probably know it best. And uh, that RV brand respects the customer enough then to handle the remainder of that process, no matter how complicated it is. I mean, it's all behind the scenes so that the, the customer's issue gets resolved in a timely manner. I mean, they're not gonna make the customer keep re-explaining the problem to different tiers of support. Uh, it's gonna be stored in some kind of CRM system where all the different parties can access that data 24 seven. And you know, in order for these RV brands to convey that respect to the customer, they're going to have to incentivize and reward their employees. I mean, that's, that's what's gonna have to happen behind the scenes, especially the frontline employees. They're gonna have to incentivize those employees not based on how quickly they can hand off the customer to the next party. That's not gonna work, right? I mean, these RV brands, they cannot incentivize employees or leadership to deny requests, right? To give them the impression that their bottom line is gonna be more profitable by denying requests, right? I mean, those kinds of incentives, they're not gonna motivate employees to treat customers with respect. So instead, I think RV brands are gonna have to incentivize employees to actually resolve the customer issues. They're gonna to have to reward employees for respecting the customer's time, right? Treating them, get this, the way they would wanna be treated. And, and that's likely, I think, a, a paradigm shift for a lot of RV brands. I, you know, I don't claim, again, to know all the answers as to how, uh, how practically brands can get there, right? But I think above all, the tone has to be set from the top. I mean, from the very top of the leadership, all the way down that you know our goal as a brand is to respect the customer that is our top priority and and i think leadership's going to have to figure out how to incentivize their employees from the top down to get that kind of culture you know in motion and you know in my opinion this kind of top rated service that i've been describing i think it's going to have to be initiated by the rv brands themselves as opposed to the individual dealers. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the local dealers aren't important at all, but let's face it, there are there are hundreds of dealers across the country. You know, some of them are big, some of them are small, and each of those dealers ultimately they're going to take their own approach to customer service. And so, in order for the RV brand's customer to get that consistent, you know, top-tier experience, I think the RV brand themselves they need to step up and take a more significant role, a more active role on that uh, post-sale experience in order to you know, keep that post-sale experience as consistent as possible each time for the, for the customer. Uh, you know, what, uh, what dealer out there, think about this, what dealer out there is begging for customers to come to them so that they can sort out more warranty issues, right? Uh, I mean, why is it that dealers seem to be uh, so overloaded, you know, so booked out into the future? It's like they can barely keep their head above water. And, and that's why I think really the RV brand is going to have to take the lead on this. You know, the RV brand, they're bigger, they can afford to build out those resources needed to serve the customer best. And, and hear me out, again, I'm not saying cut the local dealer out completely, you know, instead let the RV brand lead essentially in that process and, and figure out a way to then bring those dealers along, you know, all while having the, the brand itself serve as the authoritative, that uh, kind of one-stop source throughout the, the post-sale process. And to RV brands, remember, if, if this all sounds expensive to you in terms of extra cost, you know, that's added into the, the product itself, well, remember, that survey data that I covered earlier, customers are willing to spend more upfront if they know that they're gonna be you know, treated right on the post sale. So it's really a, it's a win-win for both the customer and the RV brand to have the RV brands invest more money developing out that post sale experience for their, their customers. All right, so respect for the customer, it's certainly a, a big part of rethinking an RV warranty. But uh, let, me, let me talk just a little bit more about how this plays out 
Uh, this is especially for RV brands that are, are struggling to relate to what is it like for their customer to have to go through the whole, uh, we'll just call it the dealer rigmarole every time that they need warranty service, right? And uh, I demonstrated this a lot more in my last video. So if you didn't catch the last week's video, why I don't use my RV warranty, definitely check it out for the full scoop. But uh, basically I think RV brands, they need to rethink forcing customers to go physically to a dealer each time that they they need a uh, warranty service and what i'm thinking is you know in our day and age with all the the technology between uh, texting video chats emails right all that stuff combined all that enables this this uh, rapid exchange of real high quality you know rich information like pictures and videos and so you know consider those tools that are readily available today uh, in conjunction with the the state of the average rv customer what i mean by that is the average rver they're not always able to physically go to a, a dealer you know sometimes they're on vacation uh, perhaps in a remote location or maybe they they live in their rv full-time and so to to drop off the rv at a dealer it, it just may not be an option or if it is it's it's an extremely inconvenient option i mean am i right all you fellow rvers watching let me know what you think in the comments below so i guess what i'm trying to say is with all the technology that's present out there you know combined with the the state of the average rver i think that rv brands have absolutely no excuse for resolving warranty issues as much as possible outside of, a, of an RV dealer. I mean, I think RV brands have no excuse for sending replacement parts directly to a customer, maybe even expediting them, you know, especially the ones that are easily uh, replaceable. I mean, uh, I don't think a customer should have to go through the whole dealer rigmarole to get a replacement part, especially if that part is maybe just a, a 50 to $100 part to, to begin with, right? I mean, I think any RV brand who cares about their customer, they should have some kind of process in place to get those types of parts out pronto to a customer, right? Direct, without having to spend all that extra time going through a dealer. And, you know, there's always going to be those parts, those issues that can't be troubleshooted virtually, right? You know, maybe it's even part of the, the savviness of the RV owner themselves. But in those situations, I would really like to see RV brands step up and then pay for a mobile RV service tech to come out and provide that, that timely service and serve the customer. And I get this option, it, it might be an expensive ones for RV brands to stomach, especially, you know, cause someone's gotta pay that bill for the, the mobile service tech to come out. But I think that if an RV brand respects the customer, you know, they respect the customer's time and they respect the customer's situation, then that same RV brand should be willing to pay for a mobile RV tech to resolve the issue under warranty. And again, maybe that's not always possible. Maybe there just isn't a mobile tech nearby that's, you know, available but i'd personally like to see that aspect of the business you know developed out and built out uh, especially when i think about larger companies like thor for instance that owns jaco here or even winnebago i mean surely they're big enough to develop some kind of mobile rv service tech network that could help resolve some of the the warranty issues you know in an efficient cost effective manner well that's a summary of what i believe in my own humble opinion you know what would make the world's best rv warranty and you know there's certainly a host of other dimensions that i i could have covered that i didn't in today's video so again do me a favor comment below to help out but i do want to close with a reminder that in today's day and age news travels fast and what i mean by that is social media is huge among rvers and so an rv brand that is committed to respecting their customer you know providing the best post-sale warranty experience possible that brand they are going to get a ton of free publicity on social media and the word's going to get out right and the same goes for RV brands that are kind of stagnant on this front. You know, they're kind of struggling and, and stuck doing things the old way. And as a result, their customers are being treated poorly in the end. And unfortunately, word's going to get out on that front too. So in closing, I'll just say that I think RV brands are going to have to decide, are they in business essentially just to make a quick buck, you know, make their earnings look good before their, their shareholders in the short term? 
Or are they in business to earn customers for life and really ensure their long-term profitability? And I think a lot of that goes to the post-sale experience that we've been talking about today. Well, anyway, guys, do me a favor again. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.